It was back in 2017 when we first saw jailbreak technology introduced into the Epic driver. I own that driver and I've got to say to this day, I still think irrelevant of the limitations and restrictions that are put on driver technology, I still believe it was one of the longest drivers that I've ever hit, still to this day. The problem that I had with it is it was long, but it was inconsistent in terms of I couldn't get it to find fairways. We're now four years on, jailbreak technology has moved on. There's another advancement in that AI, techno AI technology has kicked in with unbelievable effect in terms of the Callaway range. I'm really interested to see, is this now long and straight? Because if it is, it's a winner. Absolutely stunning morning here at Wallasey Golf Club and uh, the place looks superb even with a dusting of snow which uh, I'm not using the greens today so uh, it doesn't really bother me too much. Uh, my immediate thoughts from off the course which I always like to give you. The interesting thing for me is there's three driver head shapes and when you come out on the course you see it in the range as well and uh, we will see it from dry ball data. You understand why there are three head shapes from Callaway and I think them You've understood, you've heard as to what the logic is, and I think it rings true. There definitely is different ball flight characteristics, and they will definitely suit uh, a different type of player. And for me, I won't say uh, quite which, but one in particular would stand out for me by a mile. I find it a lot easier to use. And uh, but I think the key point here is, is that we talk about AI or, or Callaway talk about AI and there's so many uh, different variables that they've thrown into the way the face has been put together, um, then the head shapes, then the weighting. You throw all them things into the mix and you really wonder, well, does it make a difference? And I can assure you that it does. They're only minor things, but like I said, golf is about getting a golf club that is fitted perfectly to suit your requirements. And I think that's what this range allows. And uh, each of them do it very very well right in off the fairways at Wallasey it wasn't the best conditions but at least we've got it out there on the course to put it through its paces uh, before we go back into four golf and start collecting some dry ball data I just want to talk about how these things look and I don't mean just aesthetically because I think they're a great looking driver but I always say that's a very subjective thing but more than that I think that the driver that you buy nowadays and this will be no different is going to be 400 pounds plus and I think what you want to see is that you're getting some value in terms of at least the components that are used. And I think for me, this is a massive step forward for Callaway. I think this is, it looks expensive. It looks like it's got quality components. It looks like it's been well put together. And I think again, if you compare it to the Maverick from a year ago, I think it looks as though it's come on a heck of a way, to be honest with you. And not just like I said, aesthetically, but maybe more importantly, it's build quality as well. Right. I think maybe more importantly at this stage, and um, what, is, what is your opinion on the range visually? That's always the interesting bit for me. Is it going to tempt you to at least give it a try? Now let's get back to four golf. Well, you've just heard my opinions on looks, and yeah, I cannot. Seriously, these, this is quality. Do you know what I mean? It's put together um, extremely well. I think it's a massive move on from the Maverick in terms of uh, its, its visual appearance, for me at least anyway. But like I said, performance is the big key. We're gonna talk about what is on offer in terms of the variety. Go and what a ball that is. I wasn't expecting that. We're gonna talk about the three different head shapes that are available. Again, Callaway doing this amazing thing where they're producing product to appeal to and suit every type of golfer and I think that's a fantastic thing and is that what AI is doing sort of individually dialing in the kind of uh, technology that each of us need we're all very very different and uh, I think Callaway are getting somewhere with this I really do right trying to give you a bit of a breakdown on a the technical spec and how this is put together uh, we will attempt that and I'll also go through the three different models and who they might apply to the first thing to start off with is the face. AI technology is again designed, three individually designed faces. And again, to see this up close, and I'll see if I can put an image uh, in front for you now, it is very much different in terms of the variable face thickness. Where about that sort of rise and fall? It's like a map of the Himalayas on the back of these things. But they're three individually designed faces. I can't even say that bit. And then you've got 
jailbreak but it's jailbreak that has got this sort of new speed frame as they call it built in and it's just a strengthening of that structure again i think that's fairly uh, self-explanatory we know this works it attaches or strengthens the crown to the sole um, so we've got that we know that much and then it's a three different sort of styles or shapes so starting with the speed this is all about ball speeds it's all about that golfer that wants to hit the driver as far as possible it's a slightly more i'd say traditional uh, style of shape of uh, driver head it hasn't got any adjustability other than the hosel so there's no shifting of weight next up it would be the max and this is all about maximum forgiveness and maximum ball speed and weight has been distributed in this head to do exactly that and it's all about forgiveness and high launch as well is something and, and again that will bear out when we see the data very very shortly the other thing is there is adjustability in the back side of this i think it's 19 grams of weight which again can dial in in terms of custom fit and finally is the epic max ls and this is the new one that uh, slightly confuses me that uh, maximum forgiveness a low spinning version of a driver is quite an interesting mix and we'll see how it performs and whether what i'm about to read out to you bears out in data but what Callaway says is it's designed for the mid to low handicap player who want more speed neutral ball flight and forgiveness in a lower spinning high MOI package now that to me is a really interesting combination and like I say if that bears out could be a real interesting addition for a lot of uh, golfers out there right but like I said how will they all perform and will those differences be noticeable and uh, the only way we can find that out is get back to four golf and start recording some dry ball data i'm nailing this this morning you know out of interest the uh the club you see me hit on camera has been the uh the max product but well, you've heard again the details between each three which i find is incredibly interesting but i just want to talk about before uh, we go back in and look at some numbers is the uh, sound and feel which even the releases we've seen so far has been something I've noticed you picked up on in the comments. Um, I thought it was only a big deal to me, but I think it, it means uh, quite a bit to others. They've done a fantastic job with this, uh, but I like the sound of Callaway drivers because I think they get that balance between, you want to feel like something has really fired out off that club face. So you want to hear that kind of, uh, I, I don't know what, I don't know how to uh, sort of describe that feeling, but you want to hear that there's power in there somehow. But at the same time, you want uh, it to be that little bit more muted and soft. And it's that combination which I'm really struggling to describe, not very well at all. But that's what they do with this. As drivers go, that's what I want it to sound like. It's a terrible explanation, and You know what's also incredible is that um, we often question uh, technology and stories as being uh, hype and marketing and all those other things. You've got three drivers here and uh, without seeing dry ball data, you can visually see the difference in the performance between each of those three. And I'm talking about in the main ball flight, uh, these are all lofted at 10 and a half degrees in terms of their heads, but they all come out the club completely different in terms of their ball flight. So once again, to me, it says screams custom fit. Right, we've had it out on the course. We've now got dry ball data. You've heard what I think it looks like, what it feels like, but how did it perform? Which is ultimately, uh, I think, what any golf club is gonna be measured on. And uh, we'll start off, we'll get straight into numbers and we'll start with the speed uh, product. Um, just for clarification, uh, my club head speed remained around 96 mile an hour. Um, 2795 spin, 237 carry, 12.4 launch, 146 ball speed, 86 peak height. The things that stand out there is that 146 ball speed uh, in relation to the club head speed is a really good number. Spinning well, decent carry distance, decent launch. Uh, I'm going to move quickly into the Max LS product. Um, not too different in terms of the spin, 2742, 234 carry, slightly down on launch at 12.2. Uh, ball speed, uh, very slightly different. These are averages, by the way, don't forget, and 84 peak height. 
So they were almost difficult to split and uh, I sort of found that out on the uh, course to be quite honest with you. The one noticeable difference for me between the Max LS and the Speed was the sound of the two and they were quite different uh, acoustic wise. So that's something to bear in mind. And then you go into the final product which was the Max um, 2849 spin. So again the spin number remains very similar for uh, the three products. Uh, but 242 carry and that was largely down to this combination of a 12.9 launch 147 ball speed uh, which produced 94 peak height and I think the interesting number there again is that 147 ball speed um, which tells me that the Max product is performing perhaps a little bit better all across that club face which is what uh, it was certainly intended to do because we know I'm not going to be hitting this ball consistently out the middle so to produce 147 ball speeds off 96 uh, swing speed really really good number and that combination of all them put together was really impressive and I think for me out on the course I would have chose the Max products hands down for me and I thought the difference in terms of data would, it, would have been even more noticeable. I was a little surprised there wasn't bigger gaps. But it just suited me. Like I said, the one thing that's interesting for me is you've got three very different products and I could certainly tell that out on the course and I would have jumped at the Max product straight away before I'd even seen data. But then you go into dispersion. I think this is the bigger tail of this whole thing. And if you look now, I'm just going to get these on screen for reminding me as to what color these uh, dots relate to. Um, we'll start off with that speed product and look at the dispersion there. It's fairly tightly packed, but everything was sort of leaking out to the right hand side. Couldn't do a great deal about that. And then I'm going to put in the, um, the Max LS. And again, fairly decent numbers, but once again, sort of over towards that right hand grouping and then the final set of numbers was from the uh, the max product and again uh, it, it pretty much what i've seen out on the course much tighter grouping it seemed to suit my swing and i started finding down the middle fairly consistently and again a noticeable difference between the three so the thing that i would take from the test is this that it's very clear to me to see that there are three very different uh, products here and once again I like that from Callaway and I like the idea that you go and get custom fit and you find out which one of those models uh, head shapes is best to suit your requirements and your swing type and I think that's what they've done with this whole thing this whole lineup uh, of drivers so overall I'm, uh, I'm impressed I'm impressed with the other big deal for me is the way the quality of the product in the way it appears visually it looks like it's been well put together it's priced at a point where I said earlier I wasn't sure. I've seen the list price at 499, which indicates to me it'll sell for about 449 British pound. So it's steep again, it's very heavily priced. But at least in this model, I think it stands head and shoulders above some other things that are out there right now in terms of the quality of its build. But that again, very subjective and just my opinion. Right, as ever, I'm done. Thank you for watching. If you like what you've seen, don't forget this is testing on behalf of an average golfer with a club head speed in driver wise of 96 97 miles an hour so if you swing it like that if you don't quite hit the center quite as often as you should do then maybe uh, you consider subscribing hit that like button and come back and watch us uh, a little bit more often in the future but for this one uh, thank you for watching and i'll see you all very soon